Good afternoon. Welcome back to our channel, The Importance of VHS Today. Hello there, safety champions. Uh, this is your ultimate hub for everything related to environmental health and safety. In our ongoing effort to decode complex EHS topics, today we're tackling something really crucial, carbon offset prices. Now, you might think carbon offset what? Don't worry, we got you covered. Uh, picture this, a company has an ice cream factory that produces a lot of carbon emissions. They need to reduce their emissions, but it's not easy. So what they do is pay for trees to be planted somewhere else. These trees will absorb carbon dioxide, offsetting or balancing out some of the factory emissions. This act of paying for greenhouse gas reduction somewhere else is what we call carbon offsetting. So, but why is there a price tag on carbon offsetting? Well, just like we pay for goods and services, companies pay for these environment-friendly projects. The price tag or carbon offset price varies depending on the project. It could be a wind farm in Scotland or a reforestation project in Brazil or a solar power plant in India. By paying the carbon offset, companies not only balance out their own emissions, but they also contribute to global efforts against climate change. Carbon offset prices help fund projects that might otherwise lack the necessary resources, creating a triple effect of positive change. In the grand scheme of EHS, carbon offset prices form a key piece of the puzzle. Companies today are aware that their environmental responsibilities extend beyond their own operations. Through carbon offsetting, they are able to take responsibility of their for their emissions and contribute to broader environmental goals. And not just about following regulations, it's about nurturing a culture of proactive environmental stewardship. So, uh, in the simplest form, carbon offset is a reduction in greenhouse gases, uh, carbon dioxide or other gas emissions that is used to compensate for emissions made somewhere else. So, I'm going to break this down for you. One, companies and carbon emissions. Many companies and activities produce carbon emissions which contribute to global warming. Some companies produce a lot, while others produce less. Regulations and targets. Many countries have regulations that require companies to limit the amount of carbon emissions they produce. In addition, companies might have their own targets to reduce their environmental impact. Exceeding emissions limits. Sometimes a company might exceed its emission limit or target. This could be due to its type of business, the stage of its technology, or many other reasons. Buying carbon offset. When a company can't reduce its emissions enough on its own, it can pay to help reduce emissions somewhere else. This is where carbon offset comes in. A carbon offset represents a reduction of emissions in one place to balance an offset emission that have happened somewhere else. Pricing carbon offset. The cost of a carbon offset varies on and depends on the type of project being funded. Its location, the amount of offset, usually measures a tons of CO2 and many other factors. This causes the carbon offset price. Projects funded by carbon offset can include renewable energy, uh, projects like wind or solar farms, reforestation or afforestation projects, plant, planting trees that absorb CO2, or projects that capture and store emissions like methane and capture at landfills. By buying carbon asset, companies contribute to the global uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions if they are unable to reduce their own emissions completely. The carbon offset price acts as kind of an environmental contribution, helping to finance projects that uh, fight against climate change. Uh, sure. Okay, so now, um, in the... Hold on. Okay, so projects funded, projects, projects that are against climate change. So I'm going to explain this in simple ways. <laughs> Imagine you just gotten a really big yummy ice cream cone, but your mom says that you have to eat some vegetables before you can have it. You don't want to eat your vegetables, so you offer to give your little brother a toy if he eats the vegetable for you. In this situation, 
Uh, the vegetables are like the harmful carbon emissions or pollution that some companies make. The toy you give your brother is like the money those companies pay to help make their air cleaner somewhere else. That's because even though they're still making pollution, they're also paying for things like planting trees which can help take pollution off the air. So just like you might decide how many toys or how much of your allowance you're willing to give your brother to eat your vegetables, companies decide how much money they're willing to pay to help clean up the air somewhere else. The amount of money they decide on is what we call the carbon offset price. But remember, just like how it's still healthier if you eat your own vegetable, it's still better if companies can find ways to make less pollution in the first place. So what are carbon markets and why are they important? Why are they important? Essentially, a carbon market, carbon markets were created to put a piece a price on pollution. Although pollution, land, water, and air has long been treated as if it were free, it definitely comes at a price, one that we all pay in the form of environmental degradation. Carbon dioxide emissions from human activities are one of the main causes of increase in atmospheric greenhouse gas. Uh, greenhouse gas are uh, usually called GHGs that increase global temperatures it has become clear that reducing emissions and removing carbon from the atmosphere are two crit critical strategies that can help mitigate the destructive potential of climate change. Reducing emissions by allocating their cost. With popular and regulatory pressure to reduce atmospheric carbon in increase, carbon markets were created to provide an efficient market-based solution to allocating the cost of reduction. Through carbon markets, organizations that invest in emissions reductions or carbon removal can make money by quantifying and verifying those reductions, creating carbon credits, then selling those credits to other companies who could not or, or have not made reductions themselves. There are two types of carbon markets. Compliance, market. Compliance markets are operated by governments which set a cap on the amount of emissions allowed by companies in a state or country. The cap is then lowered every year, resulting in reduced emissions over a large area. In such a market, the government runs an auction where large emitters, such as oil companies for whom reduction is not practical, can purchase allowances, the right to emit one ton of CO2 equivalent. Companies can choose for themselves whether to participate in the auction, reduce their emissions, or purchase carbon credits from other companies. It's important to know that companies themselves through the marketplace determine how to comply. Among themselves, they figure out the cheapest way to comply with reductions. The next type of current market is voluntary market. The other type of current market is voluntary, and that's where Agoro Carbon Alliance participates. Uh, this is the company that helps uh, to uh, also to reduce uh, uh, GHG's emissions. So um, the voluntary market matches buyers of emissions reduction. A uh, large corporation with climate neutral pledges with sellers of those reductions. The sellers have developed projects to make reductions in various ways from addressing fugitive methane emissions to reducing land use emissions in agriculture. Uh, an example is Disney Corporation purchases carbon credits derived from a reforestation project. To neutralize the impact of their large volume of GHG emissions, Disney purchases reductions made elsewhere at a price that is lower than the cost of reducing emissions themselves. So the importance of car and markets help address the free riding issue in which large emitters often generate profit from operations that cause pollution. We all bear the cost of that pollution, while only the large companies receive the profit. By putting a price on pollution in a market-driven solution, we give corporations an incentive to invest in energy efficiency and other upgrades because they save money. At the same time, we incentivize other sectors, such as agriculture, to become involved in emission reduction by paying them to generate uh, carbon credits. Why should farmers and ranchers care? New revenue stream, no, not regulation. Carbon markets present a unique opportunity for farmers to capture a new source of revenue. It's important for farmers to know that no government will put an emission cap on, in, on individual farms because they're so numerous and their separate emissions are too small for such a government program to be cost effective. 
The government focuses on regu regulating very large emitters, those with at least 25,000 tons of CO2 emissions per year. If your operation emissions are below that amount, you will not be regulated. Practice changes, reduce emissions, generate carbon credit. The farmer's role in the carbon market is as a provider of carbon reduction. Farmland can be both a source and a sink for atmospheric carbon. By implementing conservation practices to reduce emissions or sequester carbon, uh, sequester carbon is storing it on, in soil, farmers can generate carbon credits, which can then be sold to large companies who have climate neutral goals a unique new way to make money on farms. Uh, estimated U.S. potential for carbon sequestration with about 1 billion acres of farm farmland in the U.S. and about half a ton of CO2 that can be sequestered in each acre per year. The potential for this market could be one on the order of 500 million tons or credits per year. Farmers and ranchers can calculate their carbon potential for free uh, using a carbon calculator tool. So improve water quality, conservation practices that help enhance soil health, increase water quality, and help with issues like erosion. Erosion is a serious problem for productive agricultural land and for water quality concerns. Controlling the sediment must play an important role in any soil management system to improve water and soil quality. Practice changes like rotational grazing, increase water infiltration and water quality to the land. Tillage reductions and cover crop introduction over time will improve soil structure and water permeability, allowing more rainfall to be absorbed rather than runoff of the soil surface. When runoff is reduced, there is less chance of soil particles, pesticides, and fertilizers to be carried out streams and lakes. Furthermore, a mat of green cover and living root systems on fields will shield the soil from heavy rainfalls and the water that does run off will have a lesser chance of picking up soil particles along the way. The combination of shielding from raindrops, improved soil structure, and leaving uh, roots holding soil together makes a synergistic effect, improving water quality. So uh, in, in conclusion, uh, uh, my safety champions, uh, the magic of carbon offset prices and not just about the cost, it's about transforming that cost into a, a step towards a greener and healthier planet. So the next time you hear carbon offset price, you'll know it's a symbol of our collective responsibility towards Mother Earth. If you enjoyed today's video and learned something new, be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to The Importance of EHS Today for more exciting content on our journey towards a sustainable future. Thanks for tuning in to the importance of VHS today. Keep making a difference one step at a time. Thank you so much. Talk to you uh, next week.